When you master what I'm sharing with you now, you will master the infinite well-being of yourself. Meditation is wonderful, but live in that meditation so that you don't have to do it as a practice. Well-being is the most important state of mind and energy that we can be in. You're listening to the Transform Your Life from the Inside Out podcast. This episode is another episode in the series, Conversations with a Sorcerer. And this episode and the next one, and maybe the one after that, will be how to meditate 24-7. This is something that I started learning many years ago when I started working with Don Javier. And I was always curious about the concept of meditation. I'd, I'd even started learning it in college. And I started talking to him about meditation quickly, right after I met him. And he gave me a whole new meaning and definition and way to meditate. And I want to share that with you in this series. Because when we learn to meditate, and it's not what we think that it is, when we learn to meditate, we then connect with the divine power in all of us. So if you'd like to learn how to be in a state of meditation 24-7, keep listening. How to meditate 24-7. And that sounds really crazy to a lot of us, right? I mean, we think many times, which is what I thought, how do I have time for that? I mean, how do I meditate? How do I be in meditation 24-7? And that's what we're going to talk about in this episode, the next one, and maybe the one after. And we'll go even deeper than that. This is a recount, and I'll be reading a little bit from that conversation, from a conversation that Don Javier and I had back on, it was February the 11th of 2023. And I'm not sure if we were at my house or his house. There were not a lot of people there, maybe four or five, I don't recall, but it was actually a birthday dinner for me. Now, as I read part of this, and then I'll, I'll annotate and make comments, but as I read part of this, remember that English is his second language. So I'll read it and then I'll interpret things if they're not clear. But he grew up in Mexico and he's an American citizen now, but he grew up in Mexico. So I just want to read some things here and I want to get started and then we'll dig in as we go. He started this conversation with, if you are in the present moment at all times, then you are in the inner world. And then he went on to use, he goes, you are in the within world and not in the without world. Meaning the within world is within you and the without world is outside of you. And he said, we have to get away from the outer world where most people normally live. Truth be told, I did for many, many years prior to meeting him, and most people do. Even most people that are listening to the podcast, and I attract a heavy contingency of uh, people that are spiritually oriented, many of us, we do our spirituality as a convenience, as a practice, as a way of being. Anyway, that was my commentary. But he said we have to get away from the outer world where most people normally live, and we have to get into the inner world. And getting out of the outer world, that means getting out of the stress, anxiety, and fears, and all these type of things. And this is his wording. All these things, meaning the stress and the worry and the fear and the anxiety, all these kind of things, they're very toxic for us. But yet many people live their lifetime in those ways of being, in those things. He continued with, when you go into the inner world, this is very ancient. You don't have to go meditate. Now, most of us think that meditation is going into the inner world, but let me repeat this again. When you go into the inner world, this is very ancient. You don't have to then go meditate. Now, I remember asking him back in 1996. We were standing, he lived in an apartment at that point, he and my sister, and I said, hey, Don, uh, because Don Javier, but I call him Don, oftentimes for short and abbreviated. 
I say, I said something like, Hey Don, do you meditate? And I remember him very clearly telling me that he does not meditate. And in that conversation, I started realizing that I don't understand meditation. I remember talking to a guy that lives in Sedona. He has a YouTube channel and more power to him. He has like 2 million subscribers on YouTube and he talks about spirituality. And I was sharing some concepts with him and he said, oh, I guess I should just go sit with that in meditation. That's not meditation. That is a practice because many people do meditation as a practice and not a way of being. And Don Javier went on to say, and this is what I've been trying to teach people as soon as they meet me. And he went on to say, be in the doing and the not doing at the same time. Now that seems like a conundrum to a lot of us. And I remember the first time I heard that, I was like, what? Be in the doing and the not doing at the same time. How can I be in the not doing while I'm doing or how can I do when I'm being in the not doing? It made no sense to me analytically, and it may not make a lot of sense to maybe you or other people listening. But what he shared was, is doing is the activity of the body, meaning it's a physical activity. And he said, doing is an activity of, a, of the body, and not doing is the activity of the mind. Yet what most of us focus on is the doing. And a lot of that, that's why, for example, I often talk about be, do, have. We don't know how to be, and that's being is in the not doing. But we don't know how to be, even though we are human beings. Most people, and I've been there, we are human doings. I've got to do, I've got to do, I've got to do, I've got to do all these things in life. Everything from I've got to clean the garage to I've got to build a funnel to I've got to apply for a job. So I've got to do all these things, but rarely are we in the being doing those things. DX went on to say, when I say DX, that's short for Don Javier. Um, he went on to say, what that means is, is that I don't have to go into meditation as a physical practice. And I remember asking him, as I'd mentioned a couple of minutes ago, in 2006, I know exactly where, where we were standing. And I said, hey, Don, do you meditate? And he said, no, not really. I live in meditation 24 seven. And I remember thinking back then, it's kind of like, <clears throat> you know, mind blown. What does that mean to live in meditation 24 seven? Because see, back then, I also had the interpretation of interpretation or meditation, sorry. I had the interpretation of meditation being the classical mudra positions and om, and it's quiet time and you're really quiet and you're disconnecting from the world. So it didn't make sense to me when he said he lived in meditation 24 seven, yet he's standing here physically moving around in his living room, talking to me, which to me looked like doing. And in this conversation that I'm sharing, the more recent conversation of 2023, he said, people ask me all the time, well, Don, do you meditate? And my answer is, well, not really. He said, this confuses a lot of people because they think, oh, wow, you're a shaman and you don't meditate. And he said, don't misunderstand me. I do meditate, but I live in a state of meditation 24 seven. So I don't have to unplug from here to go there, which that's what a lot of us do. Many of us unplug from here, which is what I did for decades, meaning, okay, my, he my hectic, crazy life today. Oh, you know, Calgon, take me away. The commercial back in the set in the, yeah, the seventies, I'm showing my age. Used to be a TV commercial about a product called Calgon, a bath soap, Cal Cal Calgon, take me away. And there'll be many of you that recognize that commercial or the name of it. But many times we want meditation to take us from here, meaning the stresses of the world. And we want to go there, meaning inside. 
And we think that's med meditation. You know, when we're stressed and all these kind of things in the world, and really, to some degree, it's, an, it's, a, it's a form of temporary escapism. And Don Javier went on to say, when I come back here and I do things, and he said, if I do it that way, meaning just doing it as a practice, and I unplug and I do it as a practice, that's not going to last very long. Why? Because I unplug, what he's inferring is what I, I unplug, I go into a state over there, and then I go do my meditation and relax and ohm and etc. But then I come back here, and that's why it doesn't last very long, because it's not a way of being, it is a practice of doing. And the metaphor that I often use is like going to church. You see many people who go to church, and when they are in church, they're all compassionate and loving and lovey-dovey and peace on earth and all these kind of things. And I guess it depends on what church you go to this day and age because there are a lot of churches that teach hate. I'm just being candid about it. Teach hate in the name of God, whatever that means. Anyway, many times people go to church, but you know what? Whatever, <laughs> whatever that sermon was, and I'm not laughing at them. I'm not judging. I'm just laughing at the human condition and, and the way we are as human beings. We go to church as an example, and I haven't been to church since I stopped vacation Bible school when I was eight or whatever it was. It didn't work for me. And people go to church, but they leave church and they're all like in the sermon when they're leaving the church and saying goodbye to people and feeling good. And then they get in traffic and they start doing something. They start yelling at people, driving and screaming and being upset and being agitated and all these kind of things. And that's what he's talking about meditation. If you're doing it as a practice, then it's not going to last very long. Why? Because that practice, once you stop the practice, then air quote, the meditation also stops. He went on to say, we have to be in a state of well-being. And what that means is, is to be within the inner world of me, not in the outer world. Meditation is living and being in the inner world of you and not the outer world of you. And then he went on to say that being in the outer world is the number one cause of all problems and diseases that people have. I'm going to repeat that again. Think about all the problems that you might have. Think about ail uh, ailments you might have. Think about sickness you might have or challenges. Being in the outer world is the number one cause of all of those problems and diseases that people have. And he said, when you're in the outer world, and by the way, I'm, I'm reading some of what he is saying verbatim because I want to convey his words with purity, with, with, with accuracy, without making them my words because they're not my words. These were, are, or were a teaching to me, a reminder to me a sharing with me at a family birthday party. So I want to, I may, if, if you're watching the video, I may look like I'm reading a little bit, and I am, because I listen to this audio again. I have hundreds, if not thousands of audios of him talking to me or people that work with him. But he went on this, uh, so where I was going there is, hopefully it all comes, comes across as jointed and all makes sense. But he goes, when you're in the outer world, you're susceptible to all the diseases that people create for their own selves. Think about that. When you're in the outer world, you are susceptible to all the diseases that people create for their own selves. I don't know where you are in your own life right now. Many times when we are very healthy, we're not even focused on the gratitude for health because we're looking at the world and looking at people that are, that are unhealthy, not even recognizing that, you know what? I, if I'm not careful, I could lose this health at any time, which is true for all of us. You know, a person might think they're seemingly healthy and appear to be. They go for an annual checkup and find they've got stage three cancer. I mean, I've seen things like this over and over and over again. And many years ago as a hypnotist, and I'll address that in just a moment, I'm learning my lessons as well. I'm on the path as well. But I noticed that many times the people that were the sickest physically were the most challenged mentally. 
And I don't mean differently abled. I mean simply the anger and the shame and the guilt and the resentment and all these toxic negativities that people carry around that they picked up from the outside world and they bring it to their inside world. Because I'm sure many of you have heard before, and he said this over and over and over again, disease is not in the world. Because if disease were in the world, then everyone in the world would have that specific disease. Disease, dis-ease, is within us. Now ponder that, dis-ease. And to take a step back here, you may be in perfect health today, and I hope that you are, and I intend to find you that way. But you know what? There's no guarantees. Because many times people will say, I'm going to work out, you know, five days a week, and I'm going to work out hard, and I'm in amazing shape. But then they go to work. And I used to live in New York City, and I saw a lot of this because my office was a block from Wall Street. And the amount, a lot of people came to me from Wall Street. And they would go to the gym that morning, and physically they would appear to be in great shape, but they weren't healthy. Why? Because of the stress of the job, the money, the worry, the anxiety, all these kind of things that eat away at the physical body. And he went on to say that many people, when they get sick, and if you're perfectly healthy, that's great, but keep this in mind for later, that health is an inside job. And if you know somebody that's not healthy, please share this podcast with them. Have them listen to it. And many of you might think, well, they're not going to be open to that. Well, maybe they're not going to be open to it, but they may be open to it. And if you're not sharing it, you deprive them of the opportunity to perhaps learn something that may help them heal. So we want on to say is that many people say, no, I don't want to create that. And his comment was, but you did blood pressure, high blood pressure, whatever it is you have because you were so much in the outer world. If you've listened for any amount of time, and if you haven't, go back to the very first episodes. Many people don't want to go back there because they think they're old. There's value there too. But I had heart failure and a stroke in 2020. And believe it or not, it was a lot because I was living in the outer world building like a podcast now. That's one of the top, it's in the, this podcast is ranked in the top one-tenth of one percent of podcasts in the world, in the top 102 categories, running many, many programs, and just burning my candle at both ends, so to speak. And I remember him very distinctly telling me when he came to visit in November, and I had the heart failure in February, he, the second he pulled up in the driveway and he got out of the car, he said, and he calls me Jimmy, he goes, Jimmy, you've got to slow down. And it, I wasn't running around the driveway or anything, but I was living a lot in the external world, building all these kind of things that I had built. So he, he went on to say, when you go to the inner world, you go to another level of intelligence and you activate things in your brain and then you begin to heal and that is what meditation is. Those are his words verbatim, and I'm going to repeat them again. When you go to the inner world, you go to another level of intelligence, and you activate things in your brain, and then you will begin to heal, and that is what meditation is. He went on, we cannot be in and out, in and out, meaning in the inner world, in the outer world, if we want to heal. And I don't care, because many times when we think about healing, we only think about physical healing. I have coached, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of people over the years in my programs. And most people need healing in one way or another. And for many people, it's emotional healing. Trauma we're carrying from childhood, things that we're carrying from childhood. I'm not going to go into it, in, to it in this episode, but in 28 years, I've never heard him talk about the words trauma, so to speak. He doesn't get into it. But many of us are carrying things inside of ourselves that they need to be healed. And we can heal that by going on the inside. And he wanted to say, we have to unplug from here. And many times we unplug from, from this world and then go to the inner world. We unplug from the physical world and go to the inner world, and we feel good, 
but and the healing starts, but then what we do is we come back to this world and we cut off the healing. So we said most people come back to the here and now, and then they get back into paying the bills and worrying about investments and worrying about their job and worrying about money and worrying about all of these nonsenses in life. It's all nonsense for many because it affects their health and their well-being of a person. Now, my comment here over the years, he has always said this perpetually, well-being is the most important state of mind and energy that we can be in, your well-being. Many people may misinterpret that and say, well, if I had all my bills paid, I would be well. Or if this program that I'm offering or this business or this job or whatever went well, I would be well. But I'm not well because my external life sucks or the money sucks or the job sucks or whatever. And they let that steal their internal state of well-being. So he goes on, we have to simplify stages of doing and not doing. And I know it's hard for a lot of people to understand that. So he goes on, so when people think, wow, you don't have to meditate. And as I said earlier, he said, no, don't take me wrong. Meditation is wonderful, but live in that meditation so that you don't have to do it as a practice. He went on, I live in it all the time. He continued, I live in a stage of silence within me. And like everyone else, I have to take care of this and that in life, but I don't go into stress. And yes, I'm a normal human person. And sometimes you see me responding to things, but I don't let them affect my well-being. Now in 28 years, I candidly have never seen him go into a tirade or, you know, things that most people go into. Fear, worry, anxiety, the things that I started talking about earlier, I've just never seen him do it. The way that he lives his life is kind of like, okay, something to manage, something to, something I've got to put my attention on, something that needs to be resolved or solved. But I've never, never seen him go into fear or worry. And he says, which is ego. He says, I don't go into the ego. And 90% of people live in the ego. And everything in life is about the fulfillment of their ego. And the example that he went to is many people are like, ooh, let me show off. And that's a word that he uses a lot. Meaning, let me show the world who I am. And he went on to say very wisely that when people are showing off, don't pay any attention because they really have nothing to show. And then he said, there is mastery in all of this that I explained to you. And when you master what I'm sharing with you now, you will master the infinite well-being of yourself. You will master your health. And it doesn't matter how old you are. And that's the number one key is that the healing can only be provided to you when you unplug from the outer world and you truly connect to the infinite inner world. You know, either you, and I'm sure someone you know in your extended family, friends, family, someone's ill right now. And where do most people go? Think about what I'm talking about. Where do most people go? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick is what people go into. And that's all the fear and the worry and the anxiety and the ego. And I'm not tossing any stones because the heart failure didn't bother me so much. I knew I'd heal. And I knew I'd heal from the stroke. But I remember one night when I was, I was having a reaction in my body and I called him and he's like, go rest, go rest. And he even said to me, he, I mean, he loves me. He's my brother-in-law. I love him. But he said, don't worry about a thing. He goes, tell you what, if you want to worry, just let me know. And I will worry. <laughs> I will worry for you. As a matter of fact, I will worry a lot for you and I'll do it really well for you. But I want you, I want you to go rest and I'll take care of everything else. You're going to be fine. And that's what I did. But everyone he's ever worked with that I know of, he's always, always dissuaded people from going into the fear and the anxiety, all these things in the outer world. Because he says, when you go into the inner world, you release the activity of the cerebral cortex and the vagus nerve. 
And he talked for a few minutes about the vagus nerve. I'm not going to talk a lot about it here. But he talked about the nerve that's running your entire system. And he said it's a very simple thing to do, to be in that stage of meditation. And many do not understand. And they think, they think you mean to meditate? I have to unplug from all of this. Meaning we have to stop being in the world. Stop doing things. Whereas he living in a state of meditation 24-7, he's always, and I've seen him, you know, for years doing things, but he's also in a state of meditation as he is doing things. And he said, you can be doing and not doing at the same time. And this is a stage of silence. And when you find yourself in that stage of silence, you're in meditation 24-7. Now, he said, I'm sharing all of this because this is what continues to keep me alive because I live that way. And you know what? I'm healthy thanks to that. And as best I know, he's extremely healthy and, and looks, the body, his body is aged um, and up in years and very seasoned, but he looks very, very healthy. His movement, his actions, his everything. He, he acts physiologically like a 25-year-old to, to a large degree. I want to share a, par a powerful concept here, okay? And we're probably going to go another 10 minutes in this episode. I wanted to cut them all short at 30 minutes. I may go a little over, maybe even 45. But I want to share a very powerful concept. And he says, being healthy, which is what prompted this, this part of the conversation. Now, what he's saying is, for how long? I don't know. But my body carries my being and the body cannot be in control of the being. That's worth repeating. My body, meaning my physical container, carries my being, and my body cannot be in control of my being. Yet what most of us do is we let the body control the being. And he said, I've known this since the very beginning, so I never try to control the being in me because the body is just the little me, which means, let me just rephrase that a different way. You have a being in you. You have a spirit and a soul. That is the being in you. Most of us, we let the physical body control the being. And what he was saying is, I live in a state of meditation where I'm constantly connected and he is a sorcerer, which everyone is, we just don't know it. He lives in that state of meditation by being connected to the divineness, the bigger being that is encased in the container and the body of skin. So when we go meditate as a practice, then we come back to here, meaning the physical world, the bills, the money, the worry, the anxiety, and then our ego takes over, and that is the frequency of the body. The body is the box carrying the being. There's no way, he went on to say, the little me, meaning the body. There's no way the little me can control the divine being living in the body. Think about that. Ponder that. Consider that. There's no way the little me can control the divine being living in the body. And he said, the body has divineness. But since we are in the body... We can't let the body control the totality of divineness. Plain and simple. We can't let our physical experience, Joe, Bob, Susan, Mary, Jim in my case, whatever your name is, whatever you, your human identity is, we can't let that control the totality of us. And he said, we come to the physical body and I am Javier. And he says, you know, you have your names, but that's all only temporary. When we leave this body and we integrate into the wholeness of our being. Now, that makes sense. I mean, when you leave the body and you integrate into the wholeness, whatever your name is, whatever your human identity is, whatever your possessions are, they don't exist. They're no longer relative or relevant, sorry, and relative. So we need the body, as he says here, we need the body because it's the one that's co-creating and we need the body to co-create the whole universe and with the higher divine beings that exist. And that is the purpose of the process of creation. We're each going through the process and we're going in the process of individual creation 
And he, go, he went on to say, I cannot interfere with anyone else's creation. I can only work with my own because that is the quantum universal law of how creation functions on the level of divinity. So he said, no matter what we have on the planet, religion or whatever, and then he went on to say, as he said for many years, we don't come with religion, but the structures people create on themselves and what they want to follow, because that's what we do. But he said the important key is the doing, because we don't come with structures is what he's saying, or the religion or all these kind of things. We learn them when we come to the planet, but the key is the doing and the not doing, meaning doing things physically, but being in the mind not in the worry of all the external things in the outside world. And he said, doing and not doing, the stages of silence, no matter how much you're screaming or driving or whatever, you're not unplugging when you're doing that. So, and he went on to say also, and he's always been very candid with me, even though I was formerly a hypnotist many years ago, he's always very compassionate and very supportive. But he goes, today you find all these coaches, they promote hypnosis and all this kind of stuff. But the true mastery is within ourselves. The mastery is not without ourselves. And I want to segue there because that's what we do in TCP, Transformational Coaching Program, is we help you get out of your own way, get past your blind spots to start finding that mastery in yourself. Because all mastery is in us. And then some people get very arrogant and say, oh, I can figure all this out myself. But yet they're broke for their entire life or they're sick or they're in, on their fourth marriage. So good job. Keep being arrogant and saying all the answers are in you. And yes, they are. But you can't find them because you don't have a guide to help you find them, which is what we do in TCP, the Transformational Coaching Program. And that's what Don Javier does for me. He and those that work with him. He is a guide. And he says, all we have to do is click. That's just a metaphor that he's using. Because the link in the body, I'm not sure what he meant here, because the link in the body is the mind. And when you click the body with the mind, then you click yourself with the, the divine being that is in the body. So basically what he's saying there is you are mind and body. You cannot let the body, the ego, the personality control you with the fears and the worries and the anxieties. You've got to go inside, but start living on the inside. And he said, he wanted to say that, you know, you find a lot of people, they think that they are in control, 3D, meaning they're in control of everything in their life, but they abuse their body and they're not taking care of the body. And he says, I think this is profound. I remember when he said it, it wasn't the first time in this conversation, but I find it personally very profound. When you are not taking care of the body, then you're not taking care of the divine being in the body. I think that's worth repeating. When you're not taking care of the body, then you're not taking care of the, the divine being in the body. He didn't talk about it in this conversation, but he's talked before about how when we abuse the body, we're actually hurting the divine being that's in the body. This is why we've got to also honor and respect and take care of the body because that's also honoring and respecting the divine being that also is being carried by the body. And then he said, you know, if we're abusing the body, we're not applying. And he gave me a specific word. I've, I'm not going to share it here, but I'm going to use the word law. Okay. There's a concept he has shared with all of us and many, many, many times for many years, but I'm going to just replace it with the word laws. So when we're abusing the body and we're in the, all the fear and the worry and the anxiety and things in the 3D world, then we're not applying the laws that are related to the body and the being that is in the body. And he says, I'm ruled by the law because I cannot affect the divine being that is in the body that I have. So... And then he went on being in that stage, meaning being in the, the stage of divine mind. He went on to say there's absolutely no words to say how beautiful that, that is when we do that and how that assists us, for my words here, to have the best possible experience that we can have on the planet. And he said, I find myself in a stage of well-being, health, peace, 
love, compassion all the time. There's no other way for me to explain it. And then he went on here. Let me synopsize a little bit. There are a lot of changes happening on the planet. The Shulman resonance is speeding up. The magnetic poles on the planet are changing. Humanity is going through a great deal of chaos right now as we are evolving into a higher level consciousness on the planet. And he talked about being blasted or fried, meaning his physical body is just very, very blasted. And he says that many times people want to avoid their own spiritual evolution and going inside because they don't want to feel the pain in the body. And those of us that work with him can tell you that working with a shaman and going into those inner worlds can be very challenging at times, extremely challenging. But the reason that we do it, at least speaking for me, is that so we can grow and evolve. And whether you're listening right now, you know, I know you are because you're still listening at this point. All I got to say is, I'm learning my lessons just like you are, but I'm learning my lessons in a different way and a different context than what most people are. But I'm here learning my lessons as well. Okay, I want to wind this episode down with your transformational takeaways in just a moment. But what I ask, and by the way, this is going to be a several part series and I'll pick up with the conversation, is connect with me on Instagram. I am Jim Fortin is my Instagram handle. I am Jim Fortin. Also, we have an app coming soon, and the app will be where people can join the app. We'll have a free part of the app, and then we'll have a paid part of the app, uh, very reasonable, where we can connect, and we'll create an entire community there, just like I have my transformational coaching programs. That'll be coming in the next 30 days. And my book, I title it that way for a reason, despite everything I've said. My book will be coming, and it's called The Subconscious Solution. That'll be coming within the next 30 days as well. All right. Your transformational takeaways. Number one, meditation is a way of being. It's not a way of doing practice. Number two, doing is activity of the body. Not doing is activity of the mind. Number three, being in the outer world is a number one cause of all problems and diseases that people have. Number four, well-being is the most important state and way of being. And number five, your body carries your being, your soulful being, your divine energy. And what we cannot do is let the container, the body that carries the divine being, be in control of the divine being. That's like, for example, a kindergartner being in control of a Harvard PhD, metaphorically speaking, which is what many of us do. Okay, I'm going to pick up with the second part of this episode, this series, on the next episode. So for now, thanks for listening. Please share with your friends and ponder. Listen to it again. There's some profound wisdom in this episode. Ponder it and start bringing it into your own life. Thanks for listening, and I'll catch you over on another episode. Bye-bye.